Hey, this is Mark Goldberg from Mark Vlogs Watches, and I am accompanied today by my kitty, Jupiter. I have had many, <laughs> I have had many requests. He doesn't look happy. I have had many requests to feature Jupiter in additional videos since he first made his debut. Hey, buddy. Um, so today you're gonna see, a, you know, a little bit of my kitty cat. But I warn you, he's vocal. This is your fault. I didn't ask for this. If he gets out of hand, I'll grab him and put him on my lap, and that usually settles him down a little bit. He's kind of deaf, so he doesn't hear himself talking. Okay, anyway, did I say this is Mark Goldberg from Mark Vlogs Watches? And uh, it is, and we're going to do a quick fist watch check before we get into the meat and potatoes of this video. Here It is the Sea Dweller Anniversary Edition 50 year anniversary 43 millimeter red line Sea Dweller. Oh my God, it's quite a mouthful. Now, you are going to want to stay tuned to the end of this video. And that is because I have given you at the very end of the video on cold, miserable, rainy, wet days like today, I am focusing on how to make chicken soup for watch collectors. So watch collectors, we're dudes, we're guys, what do we know about cooking? Ah, today I'm going to show you my quick, easy, fast way to make homemade chicken soup. You know, skip to the end and take a look if you're not interested in watches. Okay, but what is the topic of today? Um, the topic of today is the 10 commandments of watch collecting. My people, I bring you the 15. Oops, the 10, the 10 commandments. Now, if you just have one watch, maybe two, you, you can just skip right to the chicken soup thing. Okay, but if you're like most of us, you are into the concept of having more than one watch. You buy, you sell, you flip, you, you think you're never gonna flip. Come here, buddy. You think you're never gonna flip, but then at the end of the day, you know, you buy something, you just get tired of it, you wanna free the money up, your wife gets angry, she needs a new pair of Manolo Blahniks, whatever it is, you know, baby needs a new pair of shoes, you're going to have to sell a watch. So in order for you to have any level of success, financial, emotional, psychological, professional, all of that in the watch collecting community. I am about to give you 10 commandments. Now, this is part one because 10 is a lot and you people have a short attention span. A, a high number of you are, are millennials and millennial research proves that uh, you won't sit still for longer than it takes to get your Chipotle burrito customized, okay? So we're gonna do this in two parts, uh, you know, in, in another, few days, Kate, take a look for part two. Okay, let's get ready. Jippy's <laughs> he's ready to start. Let's start with commandment number one. Okay, commandment number one, don't pay retail. Don't be a schmuck, don't pay retail. Very important that you not pay retail, unless, and there's only one exception, unless retail is cheaper. Now, how could that happen? Let's start with that example. You know, if you wanna buy a, a BLNR GMT a Rolex Batman, that is maybe $4,000 cheaper if you buy it retail. The problem, of course, is it's very difficult to find retail, but if you should come across one, don't be like the rancher and walk away from the deal over something simple like stickers. Buy the, buy the BLNR, buy the Batman. You're gonna pay, I think, somewhere around $8,500 for a Batman retail, and you will have to pay somewhere in the vicinity of $12,000, maybe even a smidgen more now. Uh, for that same Batman on the secondary market. So don't buy retail unless retail is cheaper. I bought this retail and it was a little cheaper retail than it would be with the premium markup. Uh, but in certain other watches, such as the ceramic stainless steel um, Daytona, that's exceptional, that's way cheaper retail than it is on the secondary market. But guys, you know, those specific Rolex models are the exception to the rule. Most watches are gonna be way cheaper on the secondary market or uh, better yet, the used market. So if you want a speedy man on the moon with a Helselite crystal, uh, well, you know, as the pontiff says, it's the man on the, you know, bloody moon, right? So Joma Shop, they've got them brand new in the box gray market because those have been dumped on the market by Omega and you can get yourself a tremendous deal, something like $3,500. That comes with the big box and, uh, and all the tools. eBay is also a tremendous resource for you when purchasing uh, used watches. You. I, I'm not a huge fan of selling really expensive watches on eBay because there are a lot of protection for the buyers, not nearly the same amount of protection for the seller. But if you are a buyer of watches, 
you know, buy it on eBay. I just bought the Polar Explorer for $6,200 on eBay. And uh, here's my final word on don't pay retail, haggle. You know, you don't know these people <laughs> on eBay. Take your time, use the best offer feature, annoy every seller, take your time. Doesn't matter if you buy that watch today or next month, just keep working the system until you purchase for the lowest price historically that you can find on eBay. How can you check what is the lowest price on eBay? It's simple. Go to the filters on your search, select sold items and um, completed items. Those are two little tabs. When you select those, you will then be seeing the cat's going like, you know, not ball on my lap. When, when you select those two tabs, you are going to see historical sales for like the last year. Um, and what you want to do is you want to be the guy who pays the least amount humanly possible. Don't pay retail. Commandment number two. Buy what you like, but you have to be really careful in the initial stages of your growth as a watch collector. Don't buy what you are supposed to like, okay? I made a terrible mistake when I bought the Rolex Daytona. Everybody loves that watch, right? Everybody loves that watch. I did not love it. I flipped it, um, but it tied up money for longer than it should have. I flipped it at a point in time when it was sort of just beginning its rise. So I didn't make the kind of money I would if I, if I were flipping it today. Um, it, it just buy what you actually like. Take your time, slow down, breathe, smell the chicken soup. Don't rush into buying something because every other collector is talking it up. Slow down, take your time, really consider all aspects of what makes you like a brand and go ahead and buy the watch that you really like. Definitely avoid what you just think everybody else is doing. Now, that sounds like something simple, but since teenagers, we are programmed to wear the same sneakers, to buy the cool jeans, to get whatever, you know, whatever is cool for your particular generation. Don't do that, be a maverick, take the time. You're an adult now, or soon will be. Develop your own taste, buy what you like, not what you're supposed to like, or you will lose lots of money and be really unhappy when you have to flip that watch. Commandment number three, do not buy from shady sellers. You, you gotta be really careful who you purchase from. Um, I have told you here uh, prior, you know, that you're okay on buying from eBay because you have lots of protections, and, and that is true, but if you're a newbie at this and you're not entirely sure what you're looking at, then you wanna make sure that you're buying from sellers if they're on eBay that have lots of feedback, and by lots, I mean like over a thousand, and that it's positive, like 99.8% positive. Um, otherwise, you're probably better off going to the um, to used watch dealers. There are lots of them that you will hear mentioned on the uh, watch YouTube channels like mine. Um, I'm not gonna mention them now. There are several of them or numerous of them really. But you'll take some time to figure out who has the good reputation. When you buy from guys like this, you, you may very well pay seven, eight, nine percent more than you would have just going random um, uh, Craigslist or eBay purchases but you will have the peace of mind to, to, to know that you have bought a watch that is legitimate in good shape and that you have some recourse because you have a guy whose reputation he wants to protect. So just avoid you know, no name, never heard of them sellers, unless like me, you have enough experience to be able to gauge, am I dealing with an authentic product and do I know how the system works so that I feel like my money is protected. Okay, be careful guys, don't buy from shady sellers. Commandment number four, pay via PayPal. Now, if you're dealing with somebody like myself or um, one of the really legitimate, well-known uh, YouTubers or one of the legitimate, really well-known gray market or watch resellers, fine. You know, we have, you, you know where to find us, okay? And so we are going to ask you for something like bank wire transfer or PayPal friends and family um, option when, when you pay us for the watch. That holds our costs down. It means that we don't pay fees to, uh, to our banking institution. And it also means that we um, are a lot less subject to fraud because I, I know I'm teaching you how to buy a watch. Later, I'm gonna teach you how to sell a watch and I'll give you some commandments for that too. But we're focusing on selling right now, or excuse me, on buying. And um, you buyers have the upper hand in most cases when it comes to um, protection from fraud, provided you follow some basic rules. So I'm teaching you how to protect yourself here, guys. Don't pay via bank wire or friends and family, unless you're dealing with me, Kenny Nguyen from Jewelers on Time, David SW, people that you've heard of and that you know. If you're buying on eBay, um, for example, make sure that you pay by just regular PayPal. 
even if you are offered a two or a 3% discount for doing otherwise, the buyer protection that you get against fraud is definitely worth that two or 3%. Commandment number five, which is gonna be the last one for this video. Remember, stay tuned for the chicken soup recipe. Um, the commandment number five is don't buy to flip. You know, it, it, mind you, it's okay to flip if you decide, you know, I hate this watch or geez, I need the money. You know, something happened, you need the money. But there are a lot of people who buy a watch thinking, you know, I'm gonna wear this for a few months and I'm gonna buy at the low and I'm gonna sell at the high, I'm gonna flip it, everything's gonna be cool and, and I'm gonna make a couple of bucks. And, and you know, now that I've been studying watches and watching hundreds of YouTube videos, I think I have the knowledge to make money at this. Oh, that is a pitfall. That is a, that is a hole dug in the ground filled with punji sticks. Do not buy to flip, buy to keep, buy to hold, and this is how you will keep having your $5,000, so to speak, right? If ultimately you need to sell, fine, go ahead to sell. I'll make you a video on how to sell your watch. But let me assure you that the people who get hurt the most in watches are people who say, I can't lose. I know how to buy, I'm gonna buy right, and then I'm gonna flip out of this so I can buy stuff I don't like, I can buy with frequency, I can buy a watch that you know I think I probably won't really enjoy. Don't buy to flip. If you buy to flip, guys, you are going to hurt yourself. Well, you can see it's only 24 days to Christmas and it is miserable outside. Yeah, so the snow is turning to rain, is turning to slush. And what's better to do on a day like this chicken soup. That's right. Mark Vlogs watches. Also is quite the cook. You might not realize this. Now I'm going to give you the shortcut to making chicken soup because what we have here is a largely male audience. We're watch collectors. We're real men. And um, yet, you know, you might be trapped at home alone and want to counteract the effects of terrible weather outside. First, make sure that you have purchased a Costco chicken. I got mine from Sam's Club. You can feed it to your dogs, yourself, and your cats for like a whole week. And then you're gonna get down to the bitter end and you're gonna have like carcass. Now, I know most of you guys have no idea how to make chicken soup, let alone a chicken. When I was a young man, I boiled a chicken breast for like five hours and nothing happened. So I had to call my mother and say, Ma, what gives? There's no soup. It's just clear, nasty chicken water. And she laughed and explained to me, bones, guys. It's the bones that you got to throw in the pot. So you want to throw bones, water, a bay leaf, cut up an onion, some garlic, maybe a little parsley or some greens, and then Bring it all to a boil. By the way, you can put some carrots in there too. I just didn't have any. Some kind of pasta. We're going formal tonight with the bow ties, but we're, we're gonna have to wait on putting the pasta in because you bring it to a boil, and then you put a lid on, and you wanna simmer that on low heat for hours. How much time you got? That's how many hours you wanna simmer it for. Well, it's 11.49, this has been going since about 11 a.m. But uh, yeah, we're gonna leave it going for quite a while yet, and then I'm going to pick the bones out of it, because you know, there's gonna be all kinds of like, you know, debris in there, so you need to kind of strain the junk out. You can leave the onions in, your choice. Um, I like, you know, you gotta pull the bones out. I like to then pick the chicken off. Um, you might need to cool your chicken a little to do that, then you reassemble. At some point, you put your pasta in, Let that cook and uh, voila, you have le chicken soup. Well, this has been Mark Vlogs Watches with how to make a chicken soup the cheap and easy way. Use a Costco chicken carcass. Mm -hmm.